Okay, uh, I'm going to make this video very quickly before Piero responds to me again. Um, I'm trying to obviously do this series on time. Um, let me see, last video I discussed the difference between the A theorist and the B theorist. The A theorist, again, for refreshment, um, he believes in the real ontological passage of time, the reality of pre pastness, presentness, and futurity. Um, the B theorist thinks that there's no reality of passage of time, and um, events and objects are, are merely consisted in their earlier than and later than relations. The C theorist doesn't think that even these earlier than and later than relations hold up. Anywho, this video will explore the arguments and some of the counter objections to the reality of the passage of time. Um, I don't know if these arguments are conclusive, I'll try to let you make your own minds up about these, uh, but this will primarily be an argument against the reality of time. Uh, if you want to look up the counter objections, then obviously please do. Uh, this isn't a definitive me telling you what to think. Um, anywho, let's begin with the first objection. The first one was posed by a guy called McTaggart, which is probably where the A theorist, B theorist, and C theorist terminology actually comes from. It's in 1905, so quite a while ago, the paper was called The Unreality of Time. His sentiment is essentially this. The A theory as applied to reality essentially involves uh, contradiction and or circular reasoning. And it goes a little bit something like this. Um, the A theorist wants to say that there are properties, intrinsic and irreducible properties of objects, pastness, presentness, and futurity. Um, obviously, these are simultaneously incompatible. You can't be a past object when you're a future object. You can't be a present object when you're a past object. Uh, that, that seems pretty obvious. So um, the A theorist says, well, yes, they involve a contradiction, but the thing is, a, a future object is a thing, an object that will be present. A present object is an object that is present, and a past object is an object that has been present. So that's, that's how the uh, A theorist says it. But McTaggart says, whoa, wait a minute. You're explaining, you're trying to prove the reality of tense by assuming tense. You're trying to assume uh, future objects are those that will be present. Well, hold on, will be is, is already tense. You're already assuming the A theory, uh, the A series in order to prove it. And this is true for all the cases. So it seems like you need to assume the A, uh, the A series in order to prove it. The A theorist might respond and say, well, no, 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 no. Um, well, yes. <laughs> The A series itself is fundamental, but it's mu much like truth or good and evil. We, we need to assume them in order for them to be proved, but that no more says that they're false. It could just mean that they're fundamental. But the problem with this is, as I said before, if, if we don't suppose it, it involves a contradiction. Um, the McTaggart argument is probably one of the most damning against the reality of time, um, but a few people have sought to uh, oppose this. Anyway, second one I'll briefly mention, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, it's kind of a linguistic critique uh, by a guy called Smart. Uh, the paper, The River of Time, um, he basically says that the A theorist is confusing his transitive and his intratransitive verbs. So what he basically says is, events do not become events, they merely happen. Um, to say that events become events is, is a, a confusion, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so it would be like saying the traffic light became red, but we wouldn't want to say something like the becoming of the traffic light became red. That's the critique that he's getting at. Anyway, um, I encourage you to look that up as well. Brilliant article. The, the thing that I'm mainly going to be talking about for the rest of the video is the rate of the passage of time. So if someone says that there really is this passage of time, this, this continual changing and of ontological becoming this this whole process I think it's fair to ask them what is the rate of the passage of time and it seems like the only answer that they can give us is one second per second now small actually in the paper that I just mentioned uh, says that this is trivial and meaningless and, and blah we shouldn't accept it but he doesn't go on to give us any reasons why we shouldn't accept one second per second is as uh, meaningless because just because it's it's meaningless doesn't mean it's false or just because it's trivial doesn't mean it's false so um, there's there's actually a, a better critique that's advanced which is something like one second per second reduces to one 
Not one of anything, just one. And one doesn't seem like a rate of anything, does it really? It, it's not one of anything, it, it's just one. So, um, th there are ways to counter this objection. Um, some people say, well, no, it's kind of like an exchange rate. It's kind of like, we can have a, a fair exchange rate. A fair exchange would be, for example, one dollar per dollar. And that reduces to one, but it's, it's meaningful and it's a, it's a fair exchange rate. However, that's dependent upon the fact that exchange rate is a good analogy for the rate of the passage of time. But the rate of passage of time doesn't seem to be an exchange of anything, at least not without invoking a super time for it to there. And once we invoke one super time, we just invoke an infinite series of super time, and we, we've left the problem completely unanswered. So that's, that's, uh, that can't be done. Um, a, another thing to say about this is, is Molden says, well, no, look, we understand pi, and pi is a ratio. Pi is the ratio of length by length. But my objection would be this, look, it doesn't matter if we understand pi as a ratio or pi as an irrational number, it still performs the same function and still is of the same meaningfulness to us. Whereas one second per second, which reduces to one, one isn't a rate of exchange at all. Um, the atheist might, might say, well, no, how about we understand um, the rate of time's passage as the rate in which physical objects change. But that's, a, that's avoiding the issue altogether. Because say if we say, um, well, an hour is, the rate of time's change is uh, at one circle on a clock per hour. That's not the rate of time's change, that's the rate of the physical processes. So it still doesn't answer the question. We want to know what the rate of an hour is. And all we're left with is an hour, which is, is meaningless. Um, of course, there might be ways to overcome this objection, uh, but I've not come across them yet. Anywho, lastly, I just want to talk about the directionality of time, the intrinsic directionality of time, which the A theorist wants to say. I don't think that we can assume a directionality of time from the fundamental asymmetries which are inherent in the laws of physics. So I don't think we get a directionality of time from either the level of entropy's increase, the CPT theorem, certain radioactive decays, um, because I think a B theorist or even a C theorist could accept that the laws of physics are such that we, we can't simply reverse uh, we can't reverse uh, all of the laws and, and have them work the same. But I don't think that this gives us the directionality of time. So, brief summary, uh, my criticisms have been the McTaggart crit criticism, which is uh, A-series involves contradiction and circularity. The Smart Critique, which uh, says that, um, you know, the, it's confusion between transitive and intratransitive verbs. The rate of passage of time, which doesn't seem like it has a good answer. And um, lastly, I did touch on the directionality of time. I didn't do it justice, but um, I don't think that the directionality of time is um, too great of a concept uh, if not explored in, in a little bit more detail than it has been in the literature. So um, I'll probably the next series on time I'm gonna do is presentism versus eternalism, which is, is probably something a little bit more interesting. So take care, peace.